Good day, folks. Hello. Ah, uh, the audio check. Who's pull up our Hello. Hello, Hank. I think that's what I just saw the square to associate with the voice. All right. Let's see here. January 11th. Let's get the. So one of the things I'll just while we're waiting for you is as I'm filling out this uh, HackMD doc, one of the things we learned from the OCI calls is, is we have way too big by keeping all of our notes in one place. Um, the HackMD doc is starting to get extremely sluggish as it tries to provide IntelliSense and other things over uh, all the content. We need if we archive the content to uh, a Git repo location, that would be awesome. Um, so any volunteers would be also awesome. All right, uh, paste this here. Uh, so please do the proverbial sign in and um, for the agenda. And I'll just put conflict process for the quick answer for the freshest thing I just added, read from our hack, from our uh, Slack channel conversation. Any other agenda items? I know those others are planning a join, so we'll just we'll fill in for a moment. Okay. Marina, do you know if Shrishank is going to join or is he just jump, jumping in on Slack? Um, I'm not sure. I can ask. Okay. Uh, Niaz and Ian had just, there's no suggestion of a big, another big security thing. Just coincidentally, the two of them had other things they had to uh, deal with today, so they weren't able to attend. Um, it was my hope as I put it in Slack that we were going to talk more about the key management workflows for the ephemeral clients and so forth. Um, but it's kind of pointless without the two of them here. All right, um, why don't we just kick off? That's, this is what the recording is for also. So um, we're back for the new year, that's great. Um, everybody's been kind of digging themselves out from all the backlog of stuff from the new year and just stuff planning for the new year. So uh, at least that's what I've seen from a couple of people and it certainly affected myself. This week, I'm hoping to get back, uh, I'm planning, not just hoping, I'm planned to get back going on the uh, registry uh, prototypes that we need to be able to store and retrieve signatures uh, with the updated workflows that we've been discussing. Uh, and we want to get it to a point where we're more confident about the prototypes that we can actually roll it out um, in something more than uh, a web app uh, instance of a hack of Docker distribution that wouldn't actually scale. We actually want to be able to get it to a point where customers can use for Kubernetes deployments. Um, and whether that's a, a rollout in ACR, ECR, GCR, and in, in Docker Hub as, for, as, as well, or something else that we can actually put production-ish production workloads on um, is certainly, a, a, we certainly need to get further in the distribution process to have that confidence. So that's uh, part one. Um, Josh mentioned to me that he was hoping to maybe help with some of the prototypes. The Harbor folks have also been very um, offer, you know, insistent, insistent in a good way, uh, pr um, uh, prudent or consistent in asking, can we help, can we help, can we help? And we just wanted to get some more of the conversations concrete across notary and distribution to feel that we're making the making the progress in the direction that we feel the relevant parties are, are comfortable with because there are, this is cross-cutting various open source efforts and getting people on the same page. Um, so I'm hoping we'll get the next round of that this week uh, that we'll be able to review next Monday and next Wednesday in the OCI calls uh, to see if everybody's comfortable with the direction so we can make more process. So that's good on the ability to 
push, discover, pull signatures out of a registry. Um, the other half of this that we've split was the, and I'm sorry, my microphone was way over there. Uh, the other, other part that we've split is uh, how do we get key management handled? Um, everything, where is it stored? We said we want to be able to leverage cloud specific uh, key providers, uh, key management systems, whether it be Azure Key Vault or AWS Key Vault and so forth, or HashiCorp Key Vault. Um, but also what is the secure process for getting keys to ephemeral clients? Um, we, we haven't been punting that, we've just been splitting that as two separate conversations and Niaz has a document that he's been working on that I will hopefully get more progress on in, um, in a good way, right? We wanna make more of that, get that into the prototype and then work with the open gatekeeper folks to see if we can implement um, a solution. So that's, that's kind of the update there. Um, anything in that realm, because I, I do want to talk about the, the tough conversations as well as what Trishank kind of categorized as a conflict resolution, because I, I want to definitely want to get addressed that. We don't, we know we're not going to agree on everything, but we want people to understand where we agree and disagree and what the next steps would be. So I think that's a totally fair conversation. Anybody? Hey, Steve. Yep. Um, so I'm looking at the uh, the prototype for Notary. Um, I'm noticing the use of X509 certs. Is there any reason why GPG couldn't be plugged in for that? Yeah, we. Um, it's a good. It's a, that's another part of this great part of the conversation. We originally the prototype that Shiwei had done had both GPG key and X509, uh, and I, honestly, I'd have to go back and look at the notes. There was a concern that the way we had factored it was GPG made it almost like it couldn't really be secured. It was almost too free for all. At the same token, there's a concern that X509 is too high-end corporate-y, corporate meaning expensive to kind of get implemented. So that was one of the things we were struggling with. Um, I think, yeah, this is part of faulting and back over the holidays. I believe Shiwe had a GPG key solution prototyped again uh, that we brought back in, but I, I'd have to double check and figure out where that is. Okay, is the Git history on that repo a good place to? To dig or it should be, I believe. So uh, the way some of these prototypes were done is they were done more personal ones and then pushed up. I'm pretty sure that that history has been preserved as the PR was uh, sent in. But it's a, this is a great conversation that we have to deal with the time zones. Just on the notary channel, just ping um, Shiwe. You know, he'll he can answer directly rather than me try to represent. Him. Okay, all right. Carry on. I, I think it's totally fair to say that. We want to make sure that as part of the prototype, we address much more crisply where we're standing on GPG key versus X509 or, or something else. There was another conversation of using uh, uh, less encrypt or something like that. Like there was a recognition that there was a general problem around uh, keys and it was it started getting into the conversation, like how many problems do we want to take on? Because this is certainly the type of group that could say, look, maybe we do need to invest in something like Let's Encrypt or something similar. I won't try to weigh in on one particular one. It's just the one that comes to mind. At the same token, we need to figure out how do we scope this so we can get something out um, so that we have something to build on. And that's part of uh, a great transition to the next conversation is, um, the, the solar winds is a good example of an exploit that could happen. It wasn't containers, but it could have been. Uh, but it was also an example of something that the current scope of what we're doing with NV2 and the signing would have had the same mitigation in a good way that uh, the solar winds exploit was. They quickly discovered that the, the distribution was um, not hacked. It was in the official build system that the exploit was made. Uh, and that being able to identify that is critical. We can't do that with containers today. Uh, the notary v1 thing only works in the single repo of the single registry as soon as content moves between registries 
that Signature does not carry with it. So we continue to feel pressing to get the signing solution that we've been identifying out so we have something because right now we really have nothing to speak of. Uh, and if there's opportunities to improve that, we certainly will. Security is never a finite. It's always an, improve, an incremental improvement. And not going off and trying to figure out a let's encrypt solution, even a GPG key. Like if we could literally only support X509, that would probably not be a blocker uh, for now. Um, so I think that's part of this we, uh, scoping we need to figure out is what is the right scoping? Uh, 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 um, I, I'm not sure I'd agree, but I, I would say that uh, X509 is a blocker for most users because like, I mean, like only, I, I mean, it's not a blocker for Microsoft, yeah, but it's a blocker for um, almost all organizations who don't have X509 signing set up at all. So if, and I want to be careful not to get too much off on this and I'm trying to sign up, I even have the conversation, so bring it up. If, reg since we're trying to target registries that exist in the major clouds and the projects, like this is not like, hey, I'm running this some of the hobbyist site kind of thing. And I think you shouldn't, but that's not the blocker concern. Is it that the registry operators couldn't provide those kind of services to companies? And, and, I, and I really don't know. I'm asking the question. I, 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 um, I don't believe that, um, I don't, I don't know. I, 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 probably not. I'd say you're on mute. You're on mute. The click toggle went the wrong way. Um, I, would, I would say that in general registries would probably not want to provide signing services to Okay, I honestly I can't remember where we left because I remember the, the GPG conversation conversation came back in and I just got to go back and look at the notes. Um, so I, I I'm think... not trying to portray it as a done deal. It's it's just trying to fault in my memory and we'll we should we should definitely rediscuss that. I think I remember that the, the GPG part um, was having some issues with revocations or things like that. So revoking a certificate or something would be more complicated with GPGs. I think uh, I recall something like that was a reason to 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 go with the, the X five or nines for now. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think that using using GPG is definitely complicated because it's not clear what you mean by using. Do you mean which? Which GPG infrastructure do you actually mean? Do you mean GPG signatures or the GPG web of trust or what? Or GPG signatures authenticated by other sources? I, I, th I think it was uh, related to, to the keys. So the, 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 the GPG keys, uh, let's say your GPG key is compromised to, to uh, get the revocations in place. I think there, there was some discussion uh, we had a couple of months ago. Yeah, I think that it should be possible, though, to separate the, um, the signing infrastructure from the key management infrastructure. So if there was some, if, if you could use GPJ if you had a way to revoke and, and assign those GPG keys, um, you know, a little exactly. bit more in a way that can be changed. Um, whereas X509, I think, has, um, it has a built-in system, which, I mean, it has its own set of problems. There's lots of things yeah. written about the key revocation lists and how those can be compromised. Yeah, so with, with Notary V1, uh, uh, indeed, at, at Philips, uh, we, we have been researching this a bit, and uh, we, we also struggled with managing those keys, at least for, for the end user, for the developers, or people needing to use that. There, there was some uh, difficulties. Uh, so we built some kind of uh, web interface where you can do all this uh, tough uh, operations to, to basically create and authorize keys on repositories to, to mitigate that sort of and i think that's also taken into uh, yeah the input uh, nias uh, has been using for for the the um, key management topics
Okay, so uh, thank you, Josh, for opening the issue. I tagged Shi Wei to uh, halt in some of the conversations. It, it might even be the last key wrapper that he put supports GPG. I just, I, I, my memory, uh, I'll go, we should get the answer on that. Um, I think part of this is a good conversation in, in the sense of capturing some of the conversation decisions. We, I, I would, I know that some of these conversations have been captured in our uh, HackMD notes. Um, the, uh, and I, this is one that should be more obvious. So I think getting to the point of capturing issues will be more, uh, uh, more detailed. And I think that will help us. So we should follow that process. The larger conversation on um, this back and forth we've had with uh, the tough um, implementation on registries. Uh, I'd like to reserve some time to talk about that conversation um, and how we capture those because I do see us going quite a bit in circles on that one. Um, we clearly want the the folks from the NYU folks from you know the Tuff and Intoto groups to participate because there's clearly a lot of deep research that was done there that we'd like you know we want to be able to capitalize on that um, and incorporate and so forth. the The challenge that we've been facing is we keep on going in circles on what is the problem we're trying to solve? What is a generic problem in package management as a whole? And then how does that get applied to the scenarios we're trying to support? Um, and I think we get caught up in that and that we, there's definitely some problems. It's just not clear that it applies. And I think this solar winds conversation that we had in December was a good example of it. There was a, a good capturing of that and the start of a conversation, but we never actually identified how that would have solved any of the work that we've been doing here. In fact, I think we came out of last week's meeting with a comfort that yes, there is an application of tough in, in the uh, build systems, like up to the point that the build systems are done, um, but it, we did not come out with any action items that we need to change anything that we've been doing from the point that an image is built or an artifact is put into a registry and distributed. Um, so I, I think the the challenges I try to capture quick, just succinctly in the uh, hack notes, sorry, the Slack notes, um, that what are those scenarios? Um, what is the problem we're trying to solve? Are you, Go ahead, Justin. Are you asking, what, what are, you, are you saying, are you trying to say that you don't think there's any difference in the security model between using tough and not using tough, are you really trying to say that? I'm not or trying to say that per se, because there's certainly there's a, there's a lot more to the way tough generates signatures and the, the validations. The problem is that we have not been able to figure out how to take the pattern, which seems to have been designed around a single public registry, and apply it when public registries are owned by multiple orgs in a registry and content moves within a registry and across different registries. So we got focused on answering the perf and scale aspect, um, which I don't know if we really solved that problem, but we certainly focused on that as a, there's a spreadsheet, there was a you know, big debate and conversation on it, but it never addressed the, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah. There was an assumption that you can take the data from multiple customers and hash them in a anonymized way to generate this metadata. It wasn't, but we never addressed whether that's appropriate. And I would argue it's not appropriate to take any kind of anonymized data. There's literally no access across customer data that we as registry operators should be doing. So I, I think that's the piece that I struggle. It is not clear where this can be used in the experiences that we're targeting. I think that we're, we're fundamentally solving different problems. I think tough isn't just about signing individual files that you're downloading. It's about making sure that the signature that you verify is the correct signature, that it comes from the right party, that it's it's up to date, that it hasn't, um, that the key you're using hasn't been revoked. And I feel like it's just a, it's just a slightly different model where you're looking at kind of making sure that the system as a whole is providing secure files and secure um, signatures versus just Oh, I'm going to trust that this registry is going to show me both a file and a signature, and I'll verify that file from that registry, which is just kind of putting a lot of, of trust on that one individual system and a lot of problems if a one individual key is, is um, compromised somehow. 
And I think there's, um, there's nothing like inherently wrong with that model. It's just that we're thinking that if registries are going to be, you know, the future and used by lots of different organizations and individuals, then you need these, you know, stronger security guarantees that you can get from a more cohesive metadata strategy. Uh, Marina, I think that I, th my, I think there's a question about what size the system we're trying to protect, or how many system, how many systems of what size they are. Is the registry the system, or is the um, is the kind of customers um, Kubernetes cluster the size of the system? I mean, or is the organization of the uh, the total customer, the system. And that, I think it's more a question of like making sure that we get that size right um, so that it makes sense to the users and not, and don't make it too big, which has scaling problems. Like I think some people are definitely arguing that the whole, a whole registry is too big a unit, um, but versus it being too small where there's, too many things to manage, too many uh, keys to manage. And I think that um, I, I'm I, I'm kind of concerned about, for example, um, like having snapshot files for the entirety of Docker Hub because I think that's too big in, in terms of the system. I think it's just it's not the whole of Docker Hub isn't isn't a meaningful concept as far as anyone install, anyone working with containers is concerned, because no one cares about everything on Docker Hub. Um, I think that we we had problems with Notary V1 where an individual repo was probably for a lot of people was too small a unit. Um, and and I think we had, we had a bunch of talking about where we could do things that were in between and it probably needs to be flexible potentially as well. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I feel like there's there's definitely room, I think, for like maybe allowing both to a certain extent. Whereas if you have a small registry um, that's mostly, you know, a couple of different organizations, there's no reason that shouldn't be the unit. Or, yeah, one or, or indeed one organization, if it's your, your yeah. organization's private registry or your team's registry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but then like if, yeah, if say there's whatever millions of um, organizations on Docker Hub, then maybe maybe something in between those organizations and all of Docker Hub. Um, I don't know what that um, delineation, like what kind of delineation would make sense, but I think maybe there's some in between where you can get some of those, so you have less keys to manage, so you can get something across some number of those projects, but maybe not all. And then, yeah, and then Steve's point of view is that there are things that are across registries so that you might have some things that are on both Docker Hub and Azure and other, and that and those things as a unit make sense, but the registry is not relevant for those things. And That's so, kind of interesting. maybe you'd have like the metadata mirrored across the registries that like points to all of them or something. I have to think more about that. I just, yeah, yeah I, I, I think I think that's I think that's one of the problems is that the the size. I think, as you as you say, is definitely variable, but it also needs to make it needs to. I think that we've talked maybe did too much about tying it to registries, and maybe it's more. Um, I mean, maybe it's more about the the. Maybe it should be more registry independent than what we've been discussing, but I think that. Um, I mean, so I think that they, but those issues are, those are not irreconcilable, but I think that things got a little bit confused by assume, making assumptions that they're, they're similar to some of the other use cases with TAF, where I think, where, where it's like, you know, package distribution has very pronounced boundaries of trust. I mean, something to recognize, and we're seeing this a lot in the last year and this year more so, is it's not just one Docker Hub and have a private registry. What we've seen expand over the last couple of years is there are multiple locations to get content. There's doc, you know, in public locations, there's Docker Hub, there's Quay, there's GCR, there's Azure for some customers that actually use their registries and make public anonymous. 
there's GitHub uh, uh, it was added, ECR just added theirs, NVIDIA has a registry. And those are all public registries that people need to get, want to need and get content from. A solution that we look at has to not assume there is some metadata that spans all of those. Um, and after they've had all of that, we're saying is in production, they should not be pulling from those public registries in their production workloads. They should take the copy of that, move it into their re private registry, this gated import workflow that we've been talking about, and consume the content from the critical workload in, in their environment where they own their supply chain. There are good and bad things that happen on upstream sources. That's part of what we captured in the OCI blog. And we covered everything from technical oops to humans that were upset and emotional and made a decision and had a wild wound up having a much larger impact than they had planned. Um, and there was a third one, I forget, but basically none of those were even malicious scenarios and they broke uh, deployments. So we need to recognize that there is multiple registries, public registries, and then private registries, and then air-gapped private registries that we, we need to be able to support. And that is the P0. Like if we can't support that core validation of content, then, then we just, we haven't left go, whatever it is, do not pass go without paying $200. Yeah. I mean, I think that the copying into a, a private registry is actually where the registry model makes more sense um, for Tuff, because if you, you know you control your whole registry, you, you want to make sure that you don't, you know, you, you can even manage keys all within your same private registry. But I think that um, where it becomes, I think, a little bit more problematic is that kind of huge space where like what um, source of trust actually makes sense and what um, groups of projects actually make sense together um, when it's not your own private system. And I think that's definitely something that warrants some more discussion. Um, how, do, how do we set those parameters? And I think that, yeah, the metadata between registries was something that I said kind of as a, a thought, but you're, you're right. I think it would require maybe more coordination than is um, like wanted. <laughs> yeah, for, for a little bit of, for like a, a note on sizing, um, Quay has its own fork of Notary V1 that integrates with Quay a little bit tightly, but also provides a whole registry um, like trust point uh, that CoreOS's uh, Rocket runtime knew how to talk to. And Rocket went away and we haven't had anyone ask about it. So it seems like no one practically used an entire registry as a point of trust. Although that's perhaps just because Docker never did anything with it. Well, yeah, I think that, um, I mean, Docker went too far the other way into notary per repo, which was definitely also problematic. Um, and people wanted to, people definitely want to make larger trust judgments than a single repo in a lot of cases, um, like an org. Trusting an org is for a lot of people a good compromise or, or more than one org, but um, you know, potentially a number of orgs, but yeah, but n yeah, no one wants to trust the whole of Docker Hub. That's definitely true. So um, I'm I'm looking at it from a from a more overall perspective. So when you look at the the whole software supply chain, and uh, so from a key management perspective, I think a lot is captured in the in the notes uh, Steve was uh, sharing in the chat. Um, but from a signature perspective, I, I think, yeah, the, the metadata, let's, let's say, uh, uh, from, from development, uh, that's basically where I start my process. Uh, I'm pulling images, and preferably I would like to pull signed images, which I trust from whatever location, whether that's Docker Hub or Kai.io or uh, whatever registry. And then it moves into a CI CD place where you probably also have your internal registries with your internal caches and, and things like that. And also there are these signatures need to be, be accessed. And then I'm releasing to one or many of my clients the same image. And those clients might have uh, air gapped or, or private registries as well. So I'm basically pushing the same artifact to, to various locations. And 
the the thing I I still don't really get is how we are able to to scale this because that means all this metadata of all the dependencies I pulled in, but also the things I'm releasing myself has to be captured somewhere where, where everyone can actually access the metadata and verify the signatures. And I think that's that's the the most difficult part of the of the whole story to to capture this whole end-to-end -end flow. Because if we just focus on a single registry or a single solution, then you also focus on a single step in the process. And securing just that single step in the process is, is not going to resolve anything of, of, of the problems we are trying to resolve. So th that's a bit where, where my worry is at this, this point in time, how, how we are going to be able to scale this whole uh, solution. No, Mark, Mark, I think it's a great point. And I, I think the this is where um, we've been trying to use the multiple signature model um, that doesn't change the, the addressability of the artifact, um, so the digest doesn't change, um, to allow those circular boundaries. Like, I want to know, we'll use the Acme Rocket scenario. Uh, it was actually um, Wabbit Networks writes the software. Um, they sign it put it on Docker Hub, Docker Hub signs it, brings in Acme Rockets, Acme Rockets signs it as they consume it. Any one of those, Acme Rocket, Docker Hub could decide that they found a vulnerability and they can, um, I don't know if they would revoke, that's what you, they wouldn't revoke the server. If, if they found it was hacked for some reason, they could you know, um, revoke or identify that artifact as being a problem or even um, Wabbit Networks could being the source of the software. Ultimately, Acme Rockets can decide, and Acme Rockets could decide like you guys don't know about anything. That's fine, but they've decided that they don't trust that artifact. So, I guess what I'm asking is, th there's one. This is one of those problems that we know of, of the complexity of movement. So we're not trying to make all registries have one massive metadata thing that they can to validate because we just know it's not it's not practical, especially for the air gap. Does the approach we've taken with the multiple signatures across different environments, including the original signature moving with it, right? By the time it gets into the Acme rockets, even the private environment, all three keys would be there. Well, I think does that is... solve the problem that you're looking? Yeah, so, looking so that, that that's something we actually are already doing in our POC setup. Uh, so what we did is we basically build this this uh, user interface that that basically encapsulates the the uh, notary CLI, and uh, there we are simply able to to manage certificates for a bunch of re uh, uh, registries, and then in CI/CD we we just built some automation where you basically say okay I switch now to the other notary server I pull the thing uh, I can verify the signature. Now I'm going to release to the other registry. So I just uh, toggle the switch with, with the endpoint. Uh, I have uh, the certificates uh, for, for that other notary server as well in my CI CD and push it there. But that means there is still this, this base, uh, potential place where you can put in malicious software because I pulled from one registry, verify the signature, put in my malicious content, uh, and release it with my new signature to the other registry. I so this... what I'm saying is Notary V1 sort of supports that already, that scenario, but still you, you have the way to, to, to bypass the, yeah, the, the, the security checks. I think that there should be a way to like maintain those original signatures, but then delegate to them on the new system. So that um, with the idea being that um, you never remove those original signatures, yeah, so that you don't, you can't change anything in between. But then you say, okay, I also certify that I think that this is correct, and um, they kind of combine those things. And but I think that's one of the key challenges of this movement is not so much how to move the signatures on the packages, because that's just you know another file to copy, but how to make sure that the new system knows to trust those signatures, um, and how how they they learn that they can trust it. And I feel like that's one of the key issues is, is where do you decide who can trust it and the person who's moving it, which thing do they have control over on each side so that they can say, okay, yeah, I know that this is trusted on this new registry. 
and this is where I'm going to put it there, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, that's already possible today with not v one um, I did a small POC with that uh, to, to basically prove that. Uh, the, the thing is just that you just need a few components to, to make it easier uh, for, for the end users, for developers uh, to, to consume this kind of logic, like building blocks for your CI, CD, uh, some, some interface to, to manage the, the certificates and, and uh, basically link them to the tough roles and, and, and structures to, to, to manage those keys. But uh, in, in theory, uh, you can already do that with Notary V1. So I'm not completely followed up because with Notary V1, it, unless you guys have done something different than what the Notary V1 and doc, that was implemented as Docker Content Trust, the signatures don't move between registries or even within a registry at different repos. So I'm trying to understand that one a little bit more. Yeah, um, uh, we are re-signing the, the, the release basically. So I pull from one registry, verify the signature, and then just re-sign the same thing and push it to the other registry. Uh, on on both those registries, we have the same keys authorized, but that means in, uh, we we just create at that point in time a new signature, same keys but new signature, on the same content. Okay, so you're having to re-sign each time, and the original signature doesn't move. You have you have a trusting system where the signer every time it moves, there's a yeah. new signing to, that has to be trusted. So the security issue in our solution today is basically the place where you pull and resign. That's the place where, where a hacker could pitch in. And I think that's the, the thing yeah, you would like to resolve, but I, I, I don't see a way how we can move the, the existing signatures uh, in a secure way to, to the other registry or to the other place where you are releasing the thing. I, I think that's the main point to be resolved. So the proposal, and this is why I'm asking to take a look at the prototype proposal and why we also want to get the proposal in a functional way that people can not just stare at it, but actually play with it and touch it, right? Is the signatures are another artifact that itself are, there, there's basically this cross-validation between the signature and the artifact. Um, and it's pulled and the key still has to be validated. Don't get me wrong. Right? And that's part of why we're, I'm, we're, uh, I'm looking for Nias to, and Ian to come in to come back with more of the details because we know that that's a gap, especially from a firmware clients, is how the, the content would move, the signature would move with it. We would do it in an OCI generic way, uh, which we need to add more functionality to the registries, but it would do it in a generic way that they can be trusted as a, a cohort of each other. Um, and assuming that the keys are there to validate that. Um, so I, just so that, you know, we're, we're doing this prototype model build, you know, discuss prototype model build. And then once we validated it, we'll go back and say, all right, we've got, you know, the, the Gaudi model we've been talking about, right? We've, we've discussed it enough to build a model. Everybody stared at the model and played with it and put their things in it uh, to know that the model will, hopefully work at scale to then validate going and actually building the, the building. I don't want to claim that we're building a church, um, you know, building the, the next level of investment. So I think if you can help us by validating the, what you read in the, the two docs a little bit more to see is, what about that doesn't smell right? Or what is it that doesn't feel that, what is the gaps? Um, or we're just completely not going in the right direction. That would be really helpful. Yeah. Yeah, looking happy to help there. Um, yeah, we'll just have a look on the, the NV2 repo. I think uh, that's the one, right? There's um, a couple of them. So, but the, the two links right now, the most, the best that anybody can do in practicality without spending a day or two really full time spending on it is read those and just read through those and see if that makes sense. That's why we try to be so crisp with this, with the silly Wabbit networks and Acme Rockets thing is it, it really tries to attack, articulate the scenario. Yeah. The, um, we've done some demos. If you watch the previous videos uh, we've recorded of the NV2 prototypes, my commitment to the next week or two is to get that to a point where anybody can easily run it. Um, yeah. That's what we're trying to get to. 
Yeah, I have to, I, I was in that meeting with uh, with the demo for for NV2, uh, but didn't uh, dive in in more detail yet. And we recognize that people are time constrained, so we're trying to make it easier to digest. Yep. So the I do want to touch on something that I think we're we're I don't want to say we're glossing over, but it, it's the undertone is that we have is well I don't think. We've all, I think we're all frustrated we're not running fast enough. At the same token, we have run fast in some places and probably could have done a better job documenting some of the decisions uh, and what needs to be done. So I'll commit that now that we've got a base in the Git repos, that as we take new PRs and new discussions, that there will be better of a history in the Git history as opposed to having to read through notes or in some cases we actually didn't document the notes and you have to watch the video. That's not a scalable solution. So I think I, I, I will commit to making sure that as we capture these questions and conversations that we have, we can do those and get repos and, and have a history. And I don't know, wasn't any other conversations in that vein. Oh, just to say that I'll make sure to put our, our tough stuff on GitHub as well so that we can kind of keep track of changes to that. Because I think our design has actually changed over time, which I think is part of a lot of this confusion. And so I think that we should make that all more, more transparent and clear to everybody. So um, I'll commit to that as well to try and make it more, you know, more stuff on GitHub. And you know, I, to, to Justin's earlier point, like our, our goal is not to split and not use any of the tough work. It's how do we take that knowledge and make it applicable to the multiple registries, multiple public registries, the private registries, the air gap registries, and the content moving within those. If there's no other topics, there's nothing says we have to use the last 18 minutes. Although we could talk, the other conversation that keeps coming up is time zones. I know that's been a challenge for folks and the people that actually made it to this call is probably not as much of a challenge, but uh, I've been asking if somebody wants to volunteer and help a little bit with that, just as the, the splitting out of, of work that we're trying to get done. Okay, um, I'm not sure what the right amount of dead silence pauses until we decide to wrap up for the week. Um, we'll call it there and uh, to be continued. Thanks folks, have a good week. Thanks Steve, thanks everyone. Thank you very much, bye-bye.